All right. I give up. I have been trying to make this video all day long. Uh, it's a good thing it was Labor Day. It's a good day I had a day off because I've spent all day trying to shoot this sequence and I can't do it. I cannot do it in 10 minutes. So we're just gonna do a long video. That's just all there is to it. <laughs> sorry, sorry. There's a great pour. If you can find a pour in there, it's a great pour in there. Um, 10 seconds long. 10 seconds is how long it takes me to pour this part. So today we're gonna talk about offset pouring basin. And uh, it is an integral part of the whole system we've been talking about, right? We've been talking about ta tapered sprues. We've been talking about runners and gates that are designed to work with that sprue. Uh, well, the offset pouring basin is an integral part of that whole system. Okay, real quick, this is the kind of the mechanics of the basin from a side view. Uh, if, this, if this were the top of my mold, uh, we have the basin come in, come across the bottom, there'd be a ridge. We'd have our tapered sprue coming here, top of our bolt again. So basically, uh, the important things to note here are straight walls. We want a straight, S-T-R-I-A-G-H-T, <laughs> wall, <laughs> and a flat, and this is important, bottom. This needs to be flat across here. If you do a, a spoon shape, then the water is going to hit here and it's going to want to travel right back out the water, the metal, right? So you don't want a flat, you don't want a curved bottom, you want a flat bottom that's going to cause the liquid to come out and flatten out across here, just like this. Uh, this distance here, I typically do it about seven to 10 millimeters. That's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three eighths to half inch. It's about that big. That's about how wide I make my ridge. So don't be making a long ridge. Don't make a ridge that's, you know, two inches or inch wide. It doesn't need to be, it just needs to be uh, about that wide. And then it will be below the top of your um, sprue, obviously, and it's below the top of your thing. So that's really basically the mechanics of the, of the basin. Uh, it can be, uh, I have done a lot, a lot of basins where they were round that I cut, you cut a taper into the sprue. This becomes the ridge here. Uh, I, you're going to see today, I'm going to do actually a rectangular one, not a square one, into a square sprue. Again, you're going to cut your ridge from like here to here, so you have a nice smooth transition to the sprue. Uh, you could even, there's no reason at all why you couldn't do a, you know, a rectangular basin to a round sprue, all that works as well. Again, this is just, this is going to be this area right here. You're gonna cut away. That's the uh, mechanics of the uh, basin. All right, well, that's, uh, that's basic stuff for offset pouring basin. And one of the things that I wondered about is I looked at those pictures, I looked at this picture here, is how tall to make that ridge that's in there. That, uh, you know, I think he calls it a weir, uh, you know, it's a dam, it's a bridge, it's a ridge, it's a whatever. It's to keep that metal from coming sideways. And I asked for, I said, I, I, I looked all over his book and um, I couldn't find anything. I did find this, this sentence here, and I'll try to put it up on screen for you as well so you can read along with me. He said, this step needs a vertical height at least equal to the height of the stream at the point or at that point to ensure that it brings the horizontal component of flow to a complete stop. Okay, I have no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> and um, so I wrote, I, read, I wrote him, I said, Professor Campbell, what, what, what are you talking about? What the heck are you saying here, man? And uh, he came back and he said, try this, right? And he said, that water, as it comes, as it comes down and hits the, hits the sink and it flows horizontally, it's that height of the water as it flows horizontally that you need to stop. All right, well, that makes perfect sense to me now. Water comes down, it's, coming, it's going to spread out, or the metal is going to come down, spread out, 
and we want to stop it before it goes just leaps over to the top of the sprue. Okay, I got that now. Next sentence says, <laughs> commonly this height will be at least a few millimeters for small casting. It might be 10 to 20 millimeters for a casting weighing several tons. I cut my basin at 10 millimeters because that's what I was, I was taught to do. And um, or on my ridge at 10 millimeters. <laughs> I have never cast a casting that was many tons, several tons. Yeah, several tons. Um, not even close, right? So I think quite possibly you could cut a ridge that was much shorter. Now, I also think you could cut a ridge that was much taller. I don't know that it really matters because, well, let me just show you in paper why. All right, let me draw the basin again here. And we're going to leave the, I'm going to leave out the ridge for just now. Let's just go sprue, sprue. All right, so if this is our basin, we haven't drawn our we haven't drawn our ridge in here, our step, our dam, our weir, whatever you want to call it. But the metal is going to come down here and it's going to hit and it's going to want to start traveling horizontally here. Right? It's, going to, it's going to come down and flatten out and hit it horizontally. This is the height of the, that, that Campbell is talking about here. He's talking about how tall is this metal. So in theory, I could do a ridge very low here, as long as it's tall enough to stop this flow of metal without metal leaping over the top of it. We want to stop it and we want it to we want to start the metal to or coming up this direction in the basin. basin. Uh, that said, I'm not sure what the harm would be in making a really tall ridge if you wanted to. Metal's going to start coming up. It's, it's going to come up, come up, come up, come up. And then it's going to flow over and fill your sprue. The key here is we want our metal to be above the ridge of the, the ridge and to be filling the sprue so that we don't have air coming in this direction, right? That's the key thing. If I have just barely enough metal coming over this thing to where it kind of looks like this, I'm going to be sucking air in here because I don't have this seal across the top. So we want to be pouring fast enough to keep this basin full, keep this level up, and keep it well above, keep it above the ridge so that we block off that air from coming in. And all we're doing is metal coming down the coming down the sprue down. That's why, because that metal, you want that metal to stop its horizontal movement. And as long as the dam or the weir or the step or the ridge or whatever you call it is tall enough to stop that movement and has started to come up. I think you're okay. Personally, I think you're okay. Now, the benefit of going low and having a basin that's fairly large uh, is that of a dampening effect, or damper. And we're gonna demonstrate that in the pour. I'm gonna demonstrate that in the pour uh, really well, I think. But this idea that you have sort of this grace period, if you will, of metal uh, above that ridge that you can that you're pouring can can reg can come in and you can you can pour quicker or slower or whatever and you have that sort of dampening effect of the metal is it while you're still sealing off the top of that sprue and not letting any air come down so it's a great mechanism for two things the, the offset pouring basin is actually a great mechanism for a lot of things right first of all for those that, people that tell me oh I use a big conical I use a can and I use the conical basin and I use the, you know because my aim is terrible. Well, you can make a big basin, uh, offset pouring basin too, and you can you can pour into it. And I'm going to make a big one in my pour here, just to show you. You can do that. You can fix it by a couple of other things, and we're going to talk about that when I do the pour. Uh, your your crucible position and your body position can really, really, really affect how accurately you pour your metal. So uh, I think that's that's about it. Let me. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go to the uh, the 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 pour. Actually, the, the the setup here. I'm gonna cut the basin in. 
I cast a pretty big part here, and I cast a really big part because I wanted to be able to run the basin for a long time. And you'll see me cutting a rectangular part. I kind of uh, I cut it off to the side, hopefully to miss the part. When you see the parts, you'll understand why. Uh, but we'll we'll watch that pour, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about it. All right, we're just going to go ahead and get the uh, shape of my basin outline here, just so I know where to cut. And this is the size of my normal basin, right? So you can see that uh, this new basin is going to be much, much larger. We'll just finish cutting the outline here. And we got it cut out. Let's go ahead. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the sprue and being careful to pull it straight out. Don't wobble it around if we, if we can't help it. And we're going to go ahead and start cutting the, uh, the ridge in here. And we want a nice, smooth transition from the basin to the uh, corners of the sprue. <clears throat> Don't want to have to go around any sort of uh, corners or uh, sharp angles here. And then cut the radius on the back edge. And actually, I cut it with the, the front edge as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop this right here. And I want you to notice a couple things. First of all, uh, I am standing straight up. Uh, body position is important when we're pouring. If I were all hunched over, if I were, you know, bent over or something, then I would not have the stability that I have. And I would not have the ability to just hold the crucible where it needs to be. The next thing I want you to notice is where the crucible actually is in relationship to the mold. Uh, the lip of my crucible is right next to the mold. When I pour this metal, it, I know exactly where it's going. I'm not having to aim because I'm six inches or eight inches above. Uh, I am I'm right down there. So that will help your pour, help your aim, and help you reduce this, the need for a really, really large target because you're right there on it. Now, the next thing I want you to notice here, too, is this green line that I've put up. Uh, it's there basically just to, to point out where the top of the ridge is. You'll also notice I didn't cut the ridge smooth. <laughs> I didn't cut it straight across. But I wanted to be able to do that because it appears like the, the sprue runs dry here during this um, sequence. And I wanted to make sure that you could see that it really doesn't. From my vantage point at, at, above the sprue, uh, I could see that it stayed full the entire time. But from this angle, it looked like I ran it dry. Right, I want you to notice here the dampening effect that I mentioned earlier. I'm kind of purposely letting the basin go up and go down as I vary the rate of my speed as I pour. Uh, we're going to show this in slow motion here in just a second, and you'll get to see it a little bit better. So let's go slow motion. We're actually going to go frame by frame. So this will be the first frame. Uh, metal is just leaving the crucible. Look at the crucible placement where it is on the basement. There's no room for error here. Here's frame two. The metal has just reached the bottom uh, of the basin. Frame three, it's spreading out horizontally, just like we saw in our sink. And you can see there, right up next to the, the ridge, how it's starting to stop. And a clearer picture of it actually coming up and stopping at that ridge. We're, we're stopping that horizontal movement of the metal with that ridge. Frame four, again, we're stopping it. Frame five, still stopped. We're getting close to be of it going over, though. It's frame six, and I would say that we're just about to crest the uh, basin. Look at the level of the metal, how the metal has come up inside the, uh, the basin, too. Frame seven, I would argue that the metal has just started to go over the ridge at this point. Frame eight, you can see the, you can see the basin starting to fill. The metal is definitely up above the height of the ridge. Frame 9, we're going to just going to rack it through here. You can start to see that it's starting to go over the ridge. All right, I'm just going to let it play out here for a few more frames. Okay, this is frame 17 now. You can see that the metal has started to rise in the basin. It's starting to come up. And I would argue at this point, it's pretty clear that the sprue is full. And now we're going to start keeping it full. I want you to note too, my camera shoots at 24 frames a second. That's how I've got it set up. This was seven frames, seven frames of time. That's 290 milliseconds of time, less than a third of a second to get to this point. All right, we're going to go ahead and continue on. I'm going to, I'm going to resume. 
I want you to notice, as we go in slow motion here, we're at about 25th of the normal speed. I want you to notice the height of the metal as it goes up and down inside this, this basin. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to make such a big basin, is to show you the ability to, uh, for you to be able to, to pour comfortably into something like this. Keep the sprue full. Let's see it come up really high there. Everything is really full. Now I'm going to back off the crucible a little bit. Let it start to drain down. Oh, fill it back up again. We can adjust. We don't actually drop below the level of the, the ridge and the sprue does stay full that time. Again, and look at the movement of the metal. I mean, it's still moving around in there. I think that's amazing to see that. Back up full again. We're going to back it off. Now the mold is starting to be pretty full at this point. So we're not taking metal as quickly as, as we were early on. And we're pretty much done now. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed that long, long pour. This is, uh, that's the part that came out of there. <laughs> I know, aren't you impressed? <laughs> but I wanted something with a lot of volume that I could keep pouring and keep pouring and I could show that dampening effect. I could also show keeping that sprue full that whole time too. So, uh, you know, I want to tell you too, this has got like zero porosity in it. I don't see anything, I don't see a, a single pit I don't see any kind of bubble, nothing. That is, as far as I can tell, that is a solid cube. Not to bring into effect the microscopic bifilms that I'm sure I have in there, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty nice cube of aluminum. So that's it. I, I, you know, I really hope you learned something today. I hope that um, it got you thinking a little bit. This, especially these last three, these last three videos, you know, with the sprue and the gates and the runners and now the basin. You know, it's really not that hard to do, to do it this way. It's really not that big a deal to do it this way as opposed to doing it any other way. It's just a matter of deciding to accept it and, and, and go with it. It makes perfect sense to me, the system, uh, and how it will give you better casting. So I hope you give it a try. I hope that you really do um, sort of embrace this. And more importantly, I hope you have a great day. <laughs>